Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we're going to be doing the laboratory on the respiratory system. So here is the video I took of the model in the laboratory showing the various parts of the respiratory system. So we're gonna be starting in the nasal and pharynx region, working our way down through the lungs and the left and right lung, the different branches of the trachea we have as it goes down through. So we have that model. Uh, so we have the um, thorax model, and then we have this little kind of like poster model here. So I'm gonna go through both. Both of them are 3D or attempting to be a 3D representation of it. And then to show it a little better, since these aren't, you know, extremely great here, then I'm gonna use 3D Organon and look at that. And then we're gonna take it one step more. I have a microscope now. So we're gonna actually look at some lung tissue at high resolution or high magnification in the microscope and see if we can make out some of these microscopic structures as well, which we would have done in the laboratory. Just wanna make a little video of it now that I have a microscope that I'm able to do recordings on. So I'm not gonna do all the little labels on it like I have on the other videos here, but just going uh, through the different parts here. Actually, I'm gonna hop over here and start on this one first. So you have the your nasopharynx. This is the nasopharynx back here. This is then the oropharynx in the oral region, and then it becomes your laryngopharynx down here in your larynx. Um, so right here would be the epiglottis. This epiglottis is what comes down to block the trachea so that when you're eating food, it goes down your esophagus and not your trachea. Um, and then this has some other labels in here. There's a lot of numbers on this one. Don't worry about them all. But one thing I wanted to make note of is when you take a big breath in, you have these little ridges here. These are called your nasal concha uh, or conche. So you have a superior, middle, and an inferior. And then these meatuses are these little canals. The purpose of this is a very vascularized region is to warm up and humidify the air. You also have some nasal sinuses in here as well. Here's your frontal sinus. Then this one back here is your sphenoidal sinus. And then you also have some ethmoid um, sinuses in here as well that I'll show on the 3D organon a little bit. Uh, so that all this region in here is to moisten and humidify the air so that the oxygen can adequately dissolve in the liquids of your respiratory system. That's a very important part of allowing respiration to work. Um, so there, you breathe in, goes down your trachea and then through the different branches. Now the different branches are hard to see on this model. So there's this other part of this model right here that shows those branches. But before we get there, I wanna hop over on this one. I know I'm hopping around here a bit, but this one just shows it a little better. Right here is the hyoid bone. Uh, right above the hyoid bone is where we have the uh, epiglottis. Remember that's that flap that stops food from going down the trachea. This membrane right here is the thyrohyoid membrane connects here to this one has a number right there that is the thyroid cartilage and then this prominence right here is larger on males it's called the laryngeal laryngeal prominence or better known as the adam's apple uh, then there's some more cartilage down here um, you can't really see it on this one but there's also a, cr a cricoid cartilage in here uh, after the cricoid cartilage then we have the tracheal rings. These are what keep your windpipe, windpipe or your trachea open. So now we can go back over to this model here. We can see it a little differently. differently. I zoom into it right up here. So here's that laryngeal prominence and here is that uh, thyroid uh, cartilage. Thyroid is right by here. And then here's our, here are the tracheal rings, these little C-shaped rings that keep the trachea open. You don't want your trachea to collapse. And then here labeled 17 is that cricoid cartilage. And now we can go deeper into the lungs and we can look at this model here for going deep into the lungs. Um, we have these branches, this little first branch here, this is the carina of the trachea. Then we go into the left and the right main bronchus. Or this is the primary bronchus. Then we separate into the secondary bronchus or the lobar bronchus. Then after the lobar bronchus, we separate into the tertiary or segmental bronchus um, or bronchi for plural. So that keeps separating down smaller and smaller. So even though the diameter might get smaller, the surface area or the total surface cross-sectional area actually increases. So this is called the conducting zone and has very uh, low resistance as it spreads out through the conducting zone until it gets to the alveoli which are the little 
respiratory exchange units at the base of the terminal bronchioles. So here we have the terminal bronchioles coming in, uh, becomes the respiratory bronchioles, sometimes what it's called. Then it goes into these little grape-like structures, which a single one is called an alveolus, and then multiple ones, a group of them is called alveoli. And here we have the artery and the vein coming in and covering these, and that's the capillary bed network where uh, external respiration takes place. So there's where you have the gas exchange in here. It also breaks it, cuts it open a little bit so you can see the rounded structure. These little alveoli are connected via these little pores. And we're going to show not so much the pores, but the structure of the cells. It's a, a layer of simple squamous epithelia. So it's only a single cell layer thick. So they're very, very weak. There are two important cell types down there. There are type 1 and type 2 alveolar cells or type 1 and type 2, type 2 pneumocytes. Then there are also macrophages in there too. And we can see those when I show the microscope image later. Um, so yeah, what, another thing I wanted to point out on this is the difference between the right and the left lung. So we can actually show that back here when I take this apart. So here, right and left lung, we remove those. There's the heart. The heart is pointing a little bit to the left. So that makes it so the left lung doesn't have as much space. So there are only two lobes on the left lung. The right lung has three lobes. Uh, so there's a fissure, there's a bleak fissure on the left and the right, separating two lobes. And then the right lung also has a horizontal fissure. And I can, this model over here shows it a little bit. So right here would be the horizontal fissure. Then the oblique fissure is down here. Uh, but we can see it better when we switch over to 3D organin, which I can do right now. Uh, so this is showing the respiratory system. Uh, I'm on a high the skeletal system. So these are the main parts up here. Uh, this shows the sinuses as well. Uh, so there's the frontal sinus. So if we had the skeletal system back and we hide the frontal bone, there's the frontal sinus deep inside the frontal bone. If we hide the maxilla, there's the maxillary sinus right there. Hide the ethmoid. There are those ethmoid air cells which also help moisten the air. So let's hide the skeletal system now. Remember the hyoid bone would be right here. Right here is the epiglottis, uh, just to then show the regions. This does it well. This is the nasopharynx. Uh, this is the oropharynx. And then this is the laryngopharynx. So the larynx would be right down in there where you have your vocal cords. And then we have the thyroid cartilage right there's the uh, lar laryngeal prominence and then you just have the membranes holding this together went over those before there's that uh, cricoid cartilage and then here you have the tracheal tracheal cartilages and then right here you have the carina it separates then into the left and the right lung here you can then see the lobes uh, so two lobes on the left lung three lobes on the right so right there is the horizontal fissure and these are the oblique fissures so now if we hide one, we can then see the internal structure here as it segments down and gets smaller and smaller into, there are way more than these. There's tons and tons of surface area. Again, this is just a model representation, but it's just nice to spin it around and see what it looks like. And this structure right here, this is the hilum. This is where everything enters and exits. So if we add the arteries and veins in here, it gets a lot messier, but you can see where that comes in. We can even add the heart in there. You can see how close the heart is to all this. So these would be the pulmonary veins going back into the heart, and these would be the pulmonary arteries going to the lungs for that blood to get reoxygenated. So let's hide that and that, and it's just, it's cool to see what these alveoli actually look like in the lungs. The very delicate structures in there too. They're not too strong, they require that surfactant to stay together. Okay, now let's switch to the microscope. Uh, this part's uh, pretty exciting. Let me switch to a better screen here. There we go. Now we can see it a little better. So this is an actual section from lung tissue. Um, so let me get it into a little better focus here. So here we can see right now I'm only at 40x magnification. Over here, uh, this we I can see this is smooth muscle. So this is a, um, a blood vessel, artery or vein. It's probably an artery because uh, it's a pretty thicker wall. looks like a muscular artery. Um, over here, these little red spots, uh, these are other vessels. It could be capillaries. I see another small vessel right here. So lots of vasculature going through the lungs. And all these little circles, these are actually cross sections of alveoli, which is pretty neat. Now, one thing on this uh, section, I'm not seeing any structures. There could be some in here somewhere that look like the bronchioles or um, larger bronchi. But one thing we can look at on this, so let's we can increase our magnification here. Let's go to 100 times, and I'll have to get it into focus. 
it does auto light balance so so then we can see this little you know vessel over here a lot better we can see these alveoli or the alveolus single one right here structure slightly better uh, all these little circles or individual alveoluses or alveoli uh, throughout the lungs and you can see how thin that single layer of cell or that simple um, squamous epithelia are. Now I'm going to try to zoom in one more time into this region right here and go to 400 times magnification. It's the max magnification I want to go today and see what we can make out. So again, it's a, it's a thick, not a super thick, but it's thick enough sample that I can't get the whole thing in focus at once. So I'm actually going to try to take a stacked image here. I know you can't see the whole overlay, uh, but so I'm going to go out of focus. So, and then I'm going to slowly increase the focus as I move up through the sample, taking an image, every change in focus. And then it's going to come out of focus. And then let's bring it back just so you can see it a little better. Now I'm going to stack all these images into one image to see if we can make out different structures. We don't have to worry about changing the focus, moving up and down and seeing what we can label. So every blue spot here is actually a stained nuclei, which is pretty neat. So there we go, it came out pretty well. Uh, so if we zoom in here, right here is actually a macrophage. Uh, so this is a macrophage, this is an immune system patroller, right there's another macrophage. And now around these al alveoli in here are type one and type two pneumocytes or alveolar cells. Uh, now you can, there are some alveolar pores you can make out in here too, but you know, this is a tissue section so things can break so you can't guarantee that. Uh, now, I, I can't really differentiate between type 1 and type 2 alveolar cells, but remember, type 1 alve alveolar cells are where most diffusion of gases are taking place, and type 2 alveolar cells are producing something called surfactant. Surfactant is an important uh, protein lipid substance that is secreted in the alveoli to prevent collapse from the surface tension that water causes. But so those cells are mixed in here. And then uh, some of these cells don't have a nucleus. Those are actually red blood cells moving through and their little capillaries moving around here. But there, that's definitely, these are macrophages. And then this, that could be a type one alveolar cell and that could be a type two alveolar cell right there. So it's just kind of cool to look at the structures here. And I just wanted, we would have looked at this uh, tissue sample in the laboratory, but I just wanted to show it here on my new microscope to show you what we'd be looking at. And then you could be drawing this and we could talk about it a little more, but I just wanted to give you this opportunity to see, you know, what it looks like. And there's a difference between looking at an unfocused image and then looking at the stacked image where everything is in focus and kind of pretty neat. But that's all I have for today. So today we talked about the microscopic structures and we also talked about the macroscopic structures of the lung. So make sure you look over this and the lecture videos and reach out to me if you have any questions. But with that, I hope you all have a wonderful day and bye bye.